Welcome back to a Rockford CCG how to play UFS video. Uh, we're going over the basics, kids. Uh, we just did video one, which is telling you the different card types in UFS and how to set up the game, as in setting your board up, determining, uh, drawing your, uh, determining who's going first, drawing your opening hand, and mulligans. Um, so in this video, we're going to teach you how to play some cards. Um, so we're going to get right into it. I'm going to draw six cards. Um, we've already determined who's going first. I'm going first. So Taki here is a six hand size, so I will draw six cards. All right, so I drew six cards. Um, as you can see right here in the camera, I have one attack, four foundations, and one asset. That's a really good starting opening hand for a six hand size because you wanna be able to at least build three and maybe get a fourth or an asset. Um, cool thing about this deck is there are no two checks, uh, which is the control number down here at the bottom. Um, the, so it's gonna so they don't sneak up and scare us. So we are able to play uh, longer attack strings and um, bigger attacks later on down the game, uh, down the turn as we fill up our card pool. Um, so a um, couple things. Every card, as we as you know, if you watch video one, every card has a control, uh, a difficulty, and a control. And then we have two zones: the card pool and the staging area, as denoted by this awesome mat. Thank you, Jasko. Um, so we're going to play the first card. Uh, so I want to build out foundations uh, on my first turn because if I, I need foundations to help me pass checks and to buff and debuff attacks as the game goes on. So we're going to play the first card, which is Face of a Monster. Um, every card, like I said, if you watch video one, has a difficulty, but we're going to throw something new in. It is uh, progressive difficulty. So as we play cards down our card pool, every card gets one harder. So this is plus zero difficulty. The next card would be plus one difficulty, and then plus two. So it adds to the normal difficulty of a card. Kind of think of in a fighting game that your combo timing needs to be, it gets harder and harder to um, do a longer combo, to chain stuff together. It gets harder and harder, just like in this game. It's harder to chain your combo together. So how we play a card is we take one card from our hand, we place it into our card pool, we check our difficulty, we check our progressive, and then that's a two. So then we discard the top card of our deck and check the bottom right hand number. That is called the control check. If the control check meets or exceeds the difficulty plus progressive difficulty, we pass the card and the card is successfully played. So face of a monster is successfully played. And then we keep doing that all the way down. So world without battle is a two difficulty card plus one progressive difficulty. So we're looking for a three. We checked a four so it passes. And then we have Forge from Soul Edge. It's a one difficulty card with a plus two difficulty on progressive. We checked a revoke, so that's that is uh, passes on a five. So we overshot that one. And then now we're going to play uh, for Forge from Soul Edge again. Uh, you can have multiples of the same card unless it has a keyword unique, um, which we'll we'll get into a video. Um, about the keywords and all that, how that explains. Uh, unique, I'll go over it. You can only have one copy of that in your staging area at a time. Um, if you try to bring down another or place another into play, you as the controller of that card get to choose which version, uh, which copy you keep. So if you have a committed unique card and you bring in a ready unique card, you can destroy the committed one and have a new freshly ready foundation. Um, so this is a one difficulty plus three progressive difficulty, and we check, oh man, a three. So this is this is bad because now we failed this card, um, so our turn will end, so we get to play no other cards, and this gets discarded from the card pool, so this goes into the discard pile first. This gets discarded from our card pool into our discard pile. Our turn will end, so we are now going into what's called the end phase. I guess I kind of skipped going all over the phases. So after I bring these down in the end phase, they come down to my staging area, and now these are permanently in my staging area unless my uh, I destroy them or my opponent destroys them or whatnot. So there are a couple, there are three phases in UFS. There is the ready phase, the combat phase, and the end phase. Um, so my, let's say my opponent went, so now we are going into what's called the ready phase. So the ready phase would be, we get to ready all of our cards, we get to review, which is discard one card and then drop to your hand size. 
So I am not going to review any cards. I like my cards in hand, so I will draw up to my hand size, which is six. One, two, three, four. All right, so I don't like having just three foundations down here, so I'm gonna build another turn. Um, and then we will go over simple chaining. Uh, so Ninja Outcast, it's on a two plus zero. We check the three, it passes. Ninja Outcast again on a two plus one, which is a three. Check the six, it passes. We are going to play Rekimaru Mekimaru. It is a two plus three. Check the three. And then we are going to play Nah, I'm going to keep forward some Soul Edge because I like having a mid-block at hand. So, um, as you're playing cards, if you built your deck correctly, as a beginning player, I would suggest picking one symbol on your character. Every character has three symbols if you watch the video number one. And you build your deck around it. So, right now I have Taki off the evil symbol. So, all these cards in my deck have at least one evil symbol on them. Uh, I don't think any other cards in UFS have double of the same symbol, but I could be wrong. But as you can see, every card has to match the card prior to it. This is kind of bad because it's Taki cards. So I'm gonna swap this one out right here with this one real quick. And we're gonna swap this one out right here for this one real quick. So just as a uh, just a, as a, an example, because I'm gonna pass my turn and all this will come down. Um, this is an Akuma card. This is a Molina card. This is a Taki card. Um, they all share the evil symbol. So evil's here, evil's there. Evil's there. It's kind of cool because it goes down in a kind of a stepping fashion. But um, I'm able to play every one of these cards because they all share the evil symbol prior to the, the card before it. Um, let me get out a card from a different deck. And let's see. Uh, that's bad because that's also Akuma. Um, here we go. Uh, let's say that I wanted to play this card first. Well, that doesn't even share. Uh, yeah, let's just say, for heaven's sense, we wanted to play Shogokin. Um, I would not be able to play it, for one, because it doesn't share any symbols with um, Taki, but I'd have to have the evil symbol on here to symbol chain properly, if that makes sense. Um, it's probably bad that I picked this. I probably should have picked a card. Uh, mm, I should have probably had a different different setup for this. But um, if you have any questions, leave some questions in, in the description, uh, down below in the comments. I can answer your symbol chain questions. Um, sorry for the confusion. But uh, you have to at least share one symbol. Uh, oh, here we go. I got one. Surprise reunion. Okay, it may share air with Taki and share air with Rekimaru and Mekimaru. Um, but I would not be able to play it because it does not have evil. Um, it would have to have evil for me to play it right there. Hopefully that makes more sense. So sorry for the confusion. All right, next. Um, so I'm going to end my turn. We're gonna bring these down back into my staging area. Uh, assets go down there as well. And then we will let my opponent go. So that's how you, that's like the first two build turns of a turn. Um, we will get into abilities, uh, enhances, responses, playing forms, um, deadlock, and some keywords in the next video, which is attacking and defending. So thank you for watching this how to play USF USF, UFS video. Jesus, I'm making videos and I can't even say it correctly. Um, like, comment, subscribe, share with your play groups. Um, message me on Facebook Messenger or YouTube if you have any questions. Um, stay tuned for video number three, which is attacking and defending, like I said. Uh, check out our Patreon page where you can get all content early. And stay tuned for more videos coming from Rockford CCG. Thanks again. Bye.